Hello everyone, today's video is about methylene blue and a few cases that I've seen lately that have been really helped by it with respect to their energy levels. Uh, just before jumping into the video, just clarifying as per usual, nothing I'm saying should be construed as medical advice. This is for informational purposes only. If you need medical advice, please talk to your healthcare provider to get that advice. And if you wouldn't mind taking a quick moment at some point to please like, share, subscribe, and or post a quick comment on the video, I'd really appreciate it. So thanks in advance for taking a second to do that. So <clears throat> I post a lot of videos about methylene blue um, and it's a, it's a really really cool compound it has so many different therapeutic properties but today I'm specifically talking about how it can be helpful for energy levels so I've had a few patients over the last few weeks where they've um, been reporting that uh, starting on methylene blue has been really helpful for their energy levels um, and I'm going to talk about you know why that might be the case and then I'll just talk about their cases in a little bit of detail so to my understanding methylene blue has a, a strong affinity for the mitochondria um, you know has strong uh, antioxidant properties when used in kind of um, not super high doses when the, the dose gets high enough it turns pro oxidative and might help for other reasons but uh, like antimicrobial reasons and whatnot but at lower dosages it has uh, these very, very potent antioxidant effects. And by having a really strong affinity for the mitochondria, uh, my understanding is that it can work in a sense to help kind of like clean out the mitochondria. So you know, what does that mean? Like what a, what a general thing to say, what, what does that mean, cleaning out the mitochondria? So mitochondria are the energy producing units of our cells. They make virtually all of the energy for our cells. And when they make energy for our cells, they do create um, oxidative byproducts um, of that um, energy generating process. So the analogy I use with my patients all the time is that mitochondria are essentially like little combustion engines in our cells. And if you were to run an engine in your, like say a generator um, in your living room, say like, well, that's a terrible idea. You know, you put gasoline in the generator and it creates exhaust and you're like, oh my gosh, like you're filling your house up with like these toxic fumes. So of course you're gonna run the generator outside. Well, our cells don't have that option. They can't run the mitochondria outside of themselves. They have to be within the cell. Um, so as the, uh, if you had to run a generator inside of your living room, let's say, then you know the next best thing to say putting it outside would be well <clears throat> I'm going to run an air purifier so like all the exhaust that's coming out of the um, out of the generator is going to say run right into a you know uh, there's going to be a perfect connection to an air purifier that air purifier is going to kind of detoxify the uh, the exhaust it's going to neutralize it and then just pure air is going to come out the other end so that would be kind of the the best case scenario if you were forced to run a generator inside of your home. And so that's in essence what our mitochondria ideally do. You know, they create energy and there are some free radicals and pro-oxidants that are created as a byproduct of that energy synthesizing process, but then we have um, adequate antioxidant activity within the mitochondria to um, neutralize those free radicals so there's no net kind of like uh, uh, there's no damaging effect. There's kind of like no leftover toxic residue, if you will, to damage the innards of the mitochondria or if any of those free radicals escape outside of the mitochondria into the cytoplasm, like the, the fluid inside of the cell, that's not going to damage other um, intracellular components or the cell membrane or things like that. So that's what would ideally happen. In folks who have histories of complex chronic illness and uh, folks maybe just in general where you know they're being exposed to different chemicals they've got too much stress in their life whatever it happens to be if there are certain factors that are disallowing us to have optimal cellular physiology then that's something that can lead to a accumulation of free radicals in the um, uh, in the mitochondria and, and potentially into the rest of the cell and then that can cause uh, damage and cause compromised function now it's not that we're going to have a buildup of free radicals because free radicals pro-oxidants, they, uh, they don't linger for a long time. They react with things right away. So similarly, if you don't have that, you know, in this hypothetical example where there's, you know, the, a, a generator in your living room, if it's not, you know, uh, connected directly to that air purifier, those toxic fumes, those, uh, the exhaust, it's going to escape into the atmosphere very, very easily. And so it's, it's going to, um, it's, it's yeah, going to kind of like start having negative impacts on the person who's breathing in that air like pretty quickly. Um, so the free radicals that are generated in the mitochondria, they're not like building up, but they're going to cause damage inside of the cells. Um, and so if the damage that can occur to uh, say the different components of the mitochondria, uh, the damage that might occur to the, um, like the mitochondrial membranes, the cell membranes, like this lipid peroxidation process, for example, that happens. These are things that are sort of a, a gradual process. Um, 
they're not going to just, you know, it's not that one free radical reacts with one molecule and that molecule is just instantly vaporized. It's going to have to be hit from like, you know, multiple angles. It's sort of like, you know, kind of uh, punching holes in a, you know, a ship that's, you know, the, the hull of a ship is sailing along. You know, one hole is like, oh, it's taking on a little bit of water. We're like, ah, oh, we can bail it out, no big deal. But you punch, you know, 50 holes in the hull, it's like, okay, that, that sucker is going down. Um, so um, if we bring methylene blue into the mix, and this could be, can be true of other antioxidants as well, just methylene blue is very, very strong. Um, so, and the topic of this uh, video, as it turns out, um, if we bring a really strong antioxidant into the mix, then um, it gives the opportunity for the cell to say, hey, like maybe we can actually salvage that lipid. Maybe we can sal salvage that other enzyme. Maybe we can salvage that, you know, uh, complex in the electron transport chain in the, um, in the mitochondrial membrane. Um, so <clears throat> it's, um, it's sort of, that's what I mean by kind of this like mitochondrial, you know, uh, cleanup, so to speak. Um, so uh, long and short of it is methylene blue has a high affinity for the mitochondria. So by, you know, bring, to using methylene blue, it has the, this kind of, uh, I think, very special property where it's a strong antioxidant and it has a strong mitochondrial affiliation or uh, affinity. So we can actually, uh, in my opinion, to my understanding, um, directly work to help kind of enhance or rehabilitate the mitochondria. So I talk a lot about mitochondrial support formula, how, you know, working with different cofactors and nutrients and things like that to make the mitochondria have all the ingredients or give the mitochondria all the nutrients that they need to function properly. Really, really important, helps so many patients. Um, but sometimes it only works to a certain point. And if that might be, and in some cases that might be because the infrastructure of the mitochondria is compromised because of the kind of aforementioned um, uh, free radical kind of escape and things like that that can go on. So <clears throat> kind of circling it back to some of these patient cases. So um, these patients that I'm referring to, um, a couple of them were patients where they had already done like everything under the sun. You know, they were on the mitochondrial support formula. We had done, you know, heavy metal chelation detoxification. We'd, you know, uh, worked them up for or, and or treated them for like mold and, you know, chronic infections and different things like that. They'd really done like everything. And they, we'd worked with phospholipids. We'd worked with a whole bunch of different things, creatine, ribose, like kind of all the more um, bells and whistles type things that can be, you know, helpful for the mitochondria and folks who don't get full results from, um, Say some of the more standard mitochondrial um, supports, um, and they still weren't 100%. Bring in methylene blue, hey, my brain fog is doing so much better, my energy levels are doing so much better, and that was the only new variable that we brought into the mix, so very exciting. Um, the third case that I'm referring to, this was a patient who was already taking methylene blue before coming to see me, um, and this patient was having um, some notable issues with um, endurance throughout the day. So, you know, generally did pretty well, but then, you know, within, you know, a couple of hours or a few hours or some days, several hours of being awake, just like kind of hit a wall and be like, I'm just so tired. So this patient had self-prescribed methylene blue and found that by bringing the methylene blue into the mix, um, they were able to get, you know, anywhere from like maybe one to three bonus hours. And that was the only intervention that they had brought in as a, as kind of a new variable. So I thought that was really cool to hear that because in my sort of uh, in my practice, I, I bring methylene blue into the mix in the early days in certain cases, depending on the indication, but in a lot of cases, I don't bring it in until later on in the process because I don't want to do a deep cleaning of the mitochondria if the mitochondria don't have enough um, sort of infrastructure support in the first place, nutritional support, et cetera. If they're full of a bunch of toxins or whatnot, we kind of want to clear out a bunch of different things support the mitochondrial physiology before we start getting into that deep cleaning to help minimize the chances of there being a flare-up. Uh, with this patient, self-prescribed the methylene blue and it turned out to be a really good choice because it was you know, doing them a lot of good. Um, so anyways, just wanted to share this quick video about um, some of those methylene blue energy enhancing experiences. Um, I think it's a wonderful, wonderful substance. I'm really glad that we have access to it. And um, yeah, if uh, you are watching this video and you want to share your own methylene blue experience, whether it's related to energy or something else, please feel free to share in the comment section below. I really appreciate the comments that folks post on the videos and uh, the questions and everything as well. So I find them very interesting. And um, I, I learn things from time to time from the comments. And it's just nice to see, you know, if folks are saying like, yeah, like it really helped my energy, you know, 20 people chime in on that. It's like, well, that's, that's great. You know, it's good to see we're kind of collecting some data there or like, you know, 20 people chime in saying it didn't help my energy. It's like, oh, well, maybe this is, um, anyways, gives us more to chew on. So anyways, I uh, hope this was of interest and I will leave it there for now.